Hey, hey, what's going down? Uh, so we have been, well, I have been um, posting to get feedback from the community here, also on Instagram, uh, other social media locations, asking people what are their most pressing personal development questions. And I'm keeping tabs and I will uh, get to them as I can to answer them as quickly as I possibly can. So I have this going a roll and I'll continue to ask that questions over the next few weeks to um, just give you guys as much feedback as I possibly can about the areas of life that are important to you. So if you ever thought that Elon and I are not listening for any reason or not actually going through these groups, we are looking all the time, even if we're not responding directly. Um, we try to get to as many things as we, as we possibly can. I'm sure you guys can imagine there are a lot of people write, writing us in at all sorts of forums. So uh, with that said, this is uh, Chad Tebbit. Uh, wrote in this question about money, which I think is a common issue that everybody more or less uh, ponders at one point or another and is dealing with. <clears throat> and it's really a question of how to make more, right? And uh, particularly, Chad asked, uh, does it take money to make money? And then added this on top of it. Also, how do you get past the feeling of treading water while working 60 to 70 hours a week, and I think that's a great question. And by the way, if you're just joining me right now, uh, please hit some likes um, and just throw a comment in the box and say hello, so we can distribute this uh, video a little bit better. Um, so Chad, like, check it out, right? I think, I believe, that no matter what lens you're looking through in life, and we're all picking different lenses, right? So um, there is a developmental structure to being a human being, and at every developmental structure, there is the possibility of some kind of trauma, I think more accurately called as a rupture, and then a fixation. And the fixation is where we start getting fixated on that trauma, and then that trauma builds a particular lens, and we start viewing life um, through this lens, and that causes a certain type of reality to appear to us. And then within that reality, what we start doing is looking for uh, all this evidence, right? We start looking for all this evidence that would make that more true. And this is where a lot of people get stuck, right? So um, without knowing too much about you, uh, depending on where most of us are in our financial life, then uh, you probably watched your parents have some kind of experience with money. And that became a lesson for you about what's possible in that realm. So for example, uh, I grew up into an immigrant family. And because of that, uh, I watched my two parents hold four jobs and bring home about $400 a week when I was young. I didn't realize at that time that we were poor at all and that just wasn't in my wheelhouse however that did create a certain distance about money like i'm i'm not a type of person that has historically gone to a restaurant and not and you know been able to look at everything on the menu and not take price into consideration that's stuff i work on now because i realize there's a certain type of conditioning there about automatically looking to the right hand side of the menu so Here's my point. My point is, is that no matter what your belief system is, you're going to inherently go find evidence to make that true. You're going to find friends that agree with that paradigm and you're going to make that true. You're going to find movies and characters and literary things that you can connect to because at the end of the day, what do we all want to feel? We want to feel accepted and we want to feel connected to our worldview. Everything that's not that tends to create some kind of threat response in the system. Most of us are trying to avoid that threat response at all costs, and we try to avoid things like fear and sadness, what have you. So my point is that, yes, we can look out in society and say, hey, you have to have a certain amount of equity to start a business. And I think in, 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 I think it's easy to say and say that those kind of people have a leg up, okay? And at the same time, I'm telling you from somebody who started a business with literally $400 in the bank at the time, it just so happens to be the same number I said about my parents, but at the time, Elon and I were in commercial real estate doing super, super well. And when the economy crashed and the credit line crunch happened and all that, that stuff occurred, we lost everything. And that actually led to the fluidity of creating this company, of creating Satori Prime. So at that time, while that may have been difficult, that led to one of the most beautiful things in my life. Now, my point is, is that we had $400 in the bank at that time. And if you would have asked me in reality, somebody who's starting a business with $400 in the bank, are they going to succeed? It's easy to say no. And yet here we are, you know, we've developed multiple businesses into the seven figures uh, over the last seven years or so. And, you know, we really are doing what's on heart purpose. 
I think that people are very challenged and work very, very hard at things that they absolutely despise. Your average American, and I'm sure this goes for worldwide, people are not in job experiences that are singing and uh, like make them sing and, and, and pull them into action. So I made a, a video actually last week that was the difference between pushing and trying to make something happen and pulling and getting pulled buy something that's inspiring you and, and action seems automatic. If you didn't see that video, uh, I'm certain you could find it by scrolling down the newsfeed or even on my profile page and finding that. So my point is, is that we can find evidence for both. If you feel right now like you're swimming for 60 to 70 hours a week, I would tell you instead of saying like, hey, yeah, you can do it, go get them, Gipper, like all that bullshit, I would start looking at what is your actual relationship to money. Your average person's relationship to money is you got to work really hard to have it. We have a society that's giving you a feedback loop of hustle and grind, hustle and grind. And again, while we can easily find evidence for that, and I agree that that works to an extent, I think for your average person, when they're, they hear that how much work goes into something, they actually cower, they go into their threat response, and they actually don't take action from there, or they take action that's inconsistent with their personal alignment. People think that if they're not good at something immediately, they just must not be good at it. And that's just not what's so. I highly recommend picking up a book by Carol Dweck called Mindset. It does a really beautiful job of creating a distinction between a fixed and a growth mindset. And your average person has been educated to believe that a fixed mindset is the way to go. That if you're not immediately good at something, then it just probably has something to do with your talent or your aptitude or anything like that. However, if you actually start modeling people who are successful, and there's another great book by Robert Greene called Mastery that outlines the process of mastery. Another great book is The Art of Learning by uh, Josh Wazinski, something like that. I don't remember. Brilliant guy. He was the youngest uh, chess master of all time uh, on planet Earth to date. So, you know, these are all really great books to start looking at models of mastery. And I would look at what are the conversations that you have around money. And if you think that right now it seems difficult because whatever it is that you get to master in order to serve people in a way that they want to contribute money to you because of the value that you're giving in their lives, then that might be the gap for you. It might be why you're working so hard. Personally, Elon and I over the last three years have really invested a good amount of our time looking at the model that we grew up in, which is this work hard model, which truly produced a lot of the results that we have. And we, we always ask questions. We thought there must be other ways and other perspectives, other ways to feel about this problem, right? There's an opportunity here. And we really started investigating and looking at life at how does life get to be easy? That was the initial question. How does life get to be easy? How do we get to be graceful and patient with ourselves? And how do we get to make things easy? Today, what we really ask ourselves is, is, the, is this action feel good to us now? And really, that's the, the number one question we ask is, what feels good now? What feels good to do next? We don't try to think from A to Z. We try to think from A to B. I had a mentor that, uh, that used to say, inch by inch is a cinch. Yard by, yard by yard is hard, meaning that when you're here and you're trying to get over there and you're trying to figure out every step along the way, it overwhelms the system and you actually find that you take no action. You're paralyzed inside of your survival mechanisms. When you just look at what can I do now to start having fun to make my life better, maybe it's starting to you know, invest in reading a book 20, 30 minutes a day. Maybe it's looking at saving up money to buy a class or to educate yourself in a new way. But certainly if you keep doing what you're doing, then you can expect to get the same results in your life. And after all that, because that's all in the world of doing, I want to bring you back to that, that you have some kind of relationship with money. What's the belief about money? Here's what I find consistently true in our business. When we build something, right? Like we, we launched... Uh, something these last few weeks called The Collective. And if you want to find out more about that membership community, please go to satoriprime.com backslash collective. And if I have some kind of expectation about what's supposed to happen when that launch happens, I find that my energy is actually the bottleneck. So if it seems like money is like this linear path, which to most people it is, it's like I wake up, I go to work, I put in my time, I make money. That's linearity, okay? Now, opportunities, possibilities are everywhere all the time. But again, when we're stuck in one frame and we look at life through that single frame, then life can only come through that frame. We will only accept st stuff that's given to us that fits that frame. So if your model is that is, I can only earn money when I work really hard, guess what? Money's only going to show up when you put in a lot of fucking effort. 
if your reality is that money flows to me with grace and ease, it's everywhere all the time and there's opportunities, you will start finding that suddenly money makes its way to you in the most inexplicable, inexplicable, inexplicable ways. I have had countless times where the IRS has just sent me checks or a person walks in as like, hey, I wanna do business with you out of complete nowhere and it's a beautiful, perfect, amazing partnership exactly at that time. And all these different things that just seem to happen as if by magic, my, my girlfriend has one of the most incredible stories you will ever hear about her dog being saved and complete strangers that walked up to her and met her, handed her a $5,000 check that ended up saving this dog's life in that exact moment. And that all comes from this idea that it actually can be easy and you can open yourself up that you actually don't know how money comes into your life, but you start setting yourself to the frequency that life is truly abundant. It can come from absolutely everywhere. And that I'm open to receiving however it comes to me, even if it doesn't validate the experience that I've had my entire life. And that comes from a, a deeper and different alignment inside the system. And that's a lot of what we talk about here at Satori Prime is to how to reset the frequency and how to allow new codes and maps into your system so that you can start working with these seemingly mythical, magical type things, um, you know, that seem like these magical occurrences. I believe that magic and the, the majesty of life can be your normal experience every single day. Um, in fact, uh, Elon and somebody we talked to recently has said it's not like magical, it's normal, right? It's just like normal, magical things can literally be part of your experience every day. Even if you literally just start saying amazing, magical, unexpected, beautiful things happen to me. And you start actually not just saying that up here because it's not enough to just say mantras. Mantras can actually work completely against you because if the response in the system to a mantra is that I don't believe that, then you just activated a threat, um, like an automatic survival response in the body. However, if you can match what you think with what you see, like you actually give your mind a directive, like, you know, I want this exact thing because of my, like the energy field doesn't understand good or bad. So if you tell it like, I just want to be abundant, it doesn't actually know what you mean. But if you show it what abundance looks like to you while you're saying I want to be abundant, and then you actually feel what it would feel like to have that abundance, you're now creating a synergy and alignment through three different systems in the body. And honestly, the most important one is energy. Can you feel like a person who already has those things? And to be perfectly honest, that's what I invest the most of my, meditate, my, my meditation time in, is I actually drop into a deeper state and then I project the life that I wanna have. And it's not coming from a attachment or resistance or wanting to have more or anything like that. I just project that out here and I imagine what it looks like. And then once it's there, I let myself feel it truly feel it and emanate that feeling from within. Most people feel so unworthy that they think I'll only get to feel that when. When I produce that result, I'll start feeling that way. When I meet that person, I'll start feeling that way. You know what, when God finally gives me all that fucking money, then I'm gonna start feeling abundant. And you're putting conditions on your energy field and if the things don't align perfectly to how you expect them to, you never actually allow your energy to wander in that direction. And I think it's actually why a lot of people don't have the life and circumstances that they want. So does that mean that tomorrow you're gonna to find the job of your dreams? I don't know, it could happen, potentially. But certainly if you leave your energy in the place of, I only get remunerated when I work really hard, that's where your energy is. Life is gonna keep showing up as things to work really hard on in order for you to get remunerated. If you just open yourself up that literally opportunity and wealth can come from anywhere at all times, I have no expectations of how it's gonna arrive, it might not happen today, it might not happen tomorrow, it might happen a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. Do you have the patience and grace to continue to work on that new energy system and invest your energy into creating a new pathway for your energy to walk through so that that alignment is bringing in that new life into your existence? And know this, you know, it doesn't really matter how old you are, you've invested a lot of your time, energy, thought, and experiences, friends, everything and being committed to a very singular possibility of life. It takes something to bring an awareness to, to shift that energy to a new place, to start having a new, radically new life experience than you've had before. In my experience, otherwise the struggle continues, right? And if it doesn't show up perfectly right away, it's to, it's to just continue to be committed to that.
right? Like I don't expect to go to the gym one day and just have a six pack immediately. It's something I can, I commit to. I have grace with myself on days that I don't go or that I don't eat the perfect diet. And I'm patient as my body learns to put itself into a new state that allows for health to be fluid and easy. That's something I have, I get to invest into all the time. And that's, and that's on me to honor myself as the word that I gave that I'm going to put myself in the best possible, you know, outcome that I believe my body gets to be in. And that's truly how Elon and I got in the best shape of our lives so far. So I think that's a little bit on, does it take money to get money? It really depends on what you believe. I personally believe that money does get to flow to you with ease and grace. Uh, certainly something that we practice and preach here every single day at Satori Prime. Chad, I hope you got a lot of value from it. All the other listeners, I hope you did too. I'll see you next time with uh, more questions answered. Love you guys. Have a great day.